Hello and welcome again. In a previous video, we were discussing uh, uh, this the number of Caesar ciphers uh, that we have when we have an alphabet of 26 characters, like in this case in the English alphabet. And we found out that that number of ciphers correspond to the number of symbols, which in our case is 26. And remember what I said also is that this is a very important fact that this number is, is small because it will help us crack the Caesar cipher. And I will explain that in a second. But before I go into that, I want to emphasize the number of Caesar ciphers that we have here. So we have a shift of zero, shift of one, up to a shift of 25. Now I'm going to show you another representation or how can you uh, uh, think about the Caesar cipher. And it's kind of like a matrix notation. Now, if you don't know what a matrix is, that's fine. They just don't worry. Just think about it as an arrangement of in rows and columns. So I'm going to show you right here what I mean by that. So in this case, I'm going to represent a shift of zero clockwise as this uh, matrix that you see right here. So what do I mean by that? So what I'm meaning is the following. The arrow that you see right there is transformation. So A is transforming to A, B is transforming to B, C is transforming to C. So this is telling me how to go from the plain text to the cipher text and it's telling me what to do to each letter. Of course because there is a shift of zero clockwise there is no change at all so Z will transform into Z there. Okay uh, the change starts to happen when you of course do a a shift of non-zero. So a shift of one clockwise is moving the letter one position clockwise. So in this case this whole uh, shift is represented by this arrangement of letters. So what we're saying here is that the letter A is transforming to letter B, B transforming to C, C transforming to D, and so on and so forth. So all this here will actually tell me how to transform any plain text into cipher text as long as the plain text is in uppercase English letters. Now the one we were using in all our examples of the Caesar cipher, here let me use this color, was this shift of three. So this one right here, so shift of three clockwise. That's the one we were using. Now this is another way to actually go ahead and do the shifting. You can do it using this uh, arrangement, I'm sorry, arrangement of of letters like this in a matrix form or use the one that is similar to the clock. So, but this is the one we were using, shifting a three clockwise and of course, so the letter A will be transformed into D, B into E and so on and so forth. You can check that with the clock also. Now, the main point here is that every, um, any Caesar cipher is one of 26. Is either a shift of zero, of one, of two, of three. As you can see there, I have the complete list of all the shifts that you can have. So every uh, matrix that you see here, this, this one for example, it gives you uh, the rules or how to transform the cipher text into the plain text using a shift of seven clockwise. So I have the whole list there. Of course, I'm not going to go into the details show you each one of them. It's just to show you that they can be represented in that way. So I'm going to have all the list of, I think the last one will be a shift of 25. Remember that there are no more. And the reason for that is because any shift of either positive uh, or clockwise or negative counterclockwise will always be one of the ones that I just show you here. The last one and the other ones that I already show you. So there are only 26 of them. And as I mentioned also, this is going to help us crack the Caesar cipher. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and do that, show you an example on how to crack it. And to do that, we're going to use a programming language, which in this case is going to be Java. Uh, and the only reason we're going to use a programming language is this is because this is going to be mechanical. You can do it by hand, but it's going to take you a long time. Um, but because uh, we have, we're going to use a programming language, it's going to do it really, really, really quick. So, so let's see the setup here. So the setup here was the following. In the very, very first example, if you remember what we did. So we have Alice that wanted to communicate with Bob. 
through an insecure channel and Eve was always listening to all, every message that they were sending. Now the first example we discussed was this one. So Alice wanted to send this message mid Carlos to Bob to the insecure channel. And in that example, we actually saw that the ciphertext is this uh, collection of letters right here. P H H W F D U O R V. Now that is the message that is being sent, of course, to the insecure channel. This one right here is M. So let's call that M. So we call it, I think we called that before the same way. So M, of course, goes to Bob. And of course, Eve also gets the message. Right. So who's going to do the cracking here? The cracking, of course, is going to be done by Eve. Because Eve is the one, let's call uh, Eve here, so this one. That's the one interested in knowing what the messages are. Of course, when Eve gets the message M, it's encrypted, so it's encrypted by the scissor cipher. So Eve is the one interested in, in cracking uh, the message, or other, in other words, uh, knowing what the actual message is. Now, for Eve to crack the message, there are two important things uh, two important assumptions that we're going to make here. So the assumptions, so let me write down, assumptions. The assumptions are going to be two of them. So the first assumption is that the, all the messages are in uppercase English. All messages are in uppercase. And of course, it's going to be in an English language. And the second thing is that Eve knows, Eve knows they are using a Caesar cipher. They are using a Caesar cipher. Now, Eve might not know what, the, what kind of Caesar cipher they're using. The only thing that Eve has to know is they're using a Caesar cipher. Oh, that's the only thing she has to know. Now, how can she know that all the messages are in uppercase? Well, if she sees that the communication between them, Alice and Bob, is always in uppercase, then they, she can actually, uh, well, deduce that they, they're they using always the uppercase. Now, the second one is a little bit harder to check. It may be Eve um, captured a message saying that they will use a scissor cipher. Whatever is important here is that if you use a scissor cipher to communicate, it's very easy to crack. And so, so let's see how we, we can do that. So remember that from our example, the scissor cipher that Alice and Bob agree on is shift three to the right or clockwise. This is going to be a shift of of three, and that's and that's clockwise. Um, now, Eve doesn't know that. Uh, well, it ha doesn't have to know it. Bob, of course, when Bob gets the message, remember from the example we saw, uh, if he wants to know what the message M is, if he wants to know this message M, or the original message, the uh, plain text, he has to apply a shift of minus 3. So he has to apply a shift, let me use here, a shift of negative Three, which basically says he's going to move counterclockwise. Now, all this information about what kind of shift it is, if it is three or one or two or four, or a shift of negative three to the encrypted messages, uh, Eve doesn't know that information. She doesn't know that. The only thing she knows, again, is these two things, that the messages are in uppercase and that Eve uh, knows that they are using a Caesar cipher. That's the only two things that she knows. She doesn't know what kind. Now, the thing is, because we have, as we saw earlier, we have only 26 scissor cipher. The only thing that Eve has actually, the only thing that she has to do is take the message, the cipher text that you see here, all the cipher text, and run all the possible scissor ciphers from 1 to 25. Why? Because how does Bob get the original message, meet Carlos. Well, he takes the cipher text and does a shift of negative three. And remember that a shift of negative number is equivalent 
to one that is clockwise. Uh, and in this case, in in this case, this shift is actually equal to a shift of 23. Now, I recommend that you actually check that, checking that a shift of negative 3 is equal to a shift of 23. Remember how you do it, you take this number, negative 3, divided by 26, look at the remainder of that division, that remainder is the shift here that you, you're going to see there. So, the way that Eve is going to crack the message, so the message M, so let's do a little thing here. So let me use the gland, the Y color. So she gets the, the M is the cipher text. And how is she going to um, do crack it? So how, the cracking. So what's going to do the crack? Crack the message. So basically, you know what the message actually is. So what she's going to do is she's going to use every possible Caesar cipher. And because it's, there are only 26 of them, then one of them is the one that Bob is using to decrypt the messages. So as we saw here, uh, to decrypt the messages, Bob has to do a shift of 23. Of course, Eve doesn't know that, but the only thing she has to do is she has to take his uh, her Java program and just say she's going to shift uh, 1. She doesn't have to do a shift of 0, of course, because... Nobody will actually encrypt anything with a shift of zero. Uh, she's going to do a shift of two and so on up to she gets to a shift of shift of 25. That's all the possible shifts. So every shift that she does is going to give her a message, some kind of message here. How is she going to find out which one is the right message? Remember that she doesn't know that the shift of 23 is the one that decrypts the messages. What she can do actually is look at look at the messages that she gets from the shifts and see which one is the one that makes sense. In the sense that it gives her a kind of normal or not let's say normal something that makes sense in the English language when she runs that program because she's a very smart uh, uh, woman she's gonna run the program and run the problem by herself and run all the shifts here on this message she's gonna decrypt that message and how the only thing she has to do is she has to go through the list of all the messages that the Java program is gonna give her and decide from there which one is the one that is that they are communicating the the one that was sent again uh, she has to actually see the message and and look at the one that actually makes sense so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to move to um to the java program run it and see how that goes so i'm here playing the role of eve and she is the one who intercepted this message this p h h w f d u O R V. Uh, of course, she doesn't know what the message is because this is uh, the cipher text. So what she can do is she can run all the Caesar ciphers that are possible, assuming of course that all are in uppercase English, and she knows that they are using a Caesar cipher. Now she doesn't actually know have to know what Caesar cipher is. She just has to apply a Caesar cipher and all the possible Caesar ciphers to this uh, message here, the ciphertext, and see what comes out of it. So what I'm going to show you now is the Java application that uh, Eve wrote. And so the Java application is right here. So what the Java application will do is will ask the user for the message that wants to be decrypted, and it will show the 25 different possibilities for the decrypted message. So let me run here the Java program. So I could, as you can see, it's the console program. And I'm going to type the encrypted message. So I'm going to just pass it there. I'm just going to press enter. And what the program is going to do, as you can see here, it gives me 25 possibilities. Now, I don't have to shift 0 because shifting 0 is not encrypted anything. So as you can see here, all are numbered from 1 
through 25. The number one that you see there is meaning that that is a shift of one using this one right here. Of course, that doesn't make any sense there, right? So it's not a uh, sentence in English, let's say, that makes any sense. But if you just scroll down here, here and you look at 23, that one is mid Carlos. That is actually the original message, that is the plain text that Alice sent to Bob. And why is the one that is working? Why is it 23? Remember, because 23, shift clock clockwise, is exactly the same as shifting negative 3 or shifting 3 contact clockwise. Now, how does Eve know that uh, 23 is actually the original message? Oh, well, she knows that uh, in this particular case, because if you look at all the possible uh, 25 messages, uh, 23 is the only one that makes sense. Now, of course, uh, decrypting or cracking a message is not an exact science. Uh, you have to do trial and error and see which one is the one that actually makes sense. Uh, you will see the application of this uh, cracking, you can call it cracking or decrypted messages later when we uh, look at cracking or uh, decrypting this uh, substitution cipher, which is actually a general case of the Caesar cipher. So as you can see here of all this example, the Caesar cipher is not secure at all. It can be cracked in a matter of seconds, and it actually didn't take us uh, seconds. It take, took like less than one second actually to see what the, the original message was. So using the scissor cipher for actual communication is a really bad idea. Uh, nobody should be using the scissor cipher for any kind of communication that needs to be secure. The reason we are looking at these kinds of scissor cipher is to introduce the idea of uh, cryptography or the basics of cryptography and how can we apply this in real life.